So guys, can we have a round of applause for our get first guest speaker, Serpil Chanelmish. Thanks, Wayne, and thanks everyone for coming out tonight. As Wayne said, I'm the co-director of the content agency Written and Recorded. And we define the effective communication elements in three phases. We say communication should be real, it should be genuine and honest, and it should never be boring. And that's what we bring to the podcast making mix as well. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about the history of podcasting. So podcasting, where did it evolve from? Podcasting is essentially audio on demand. You can listen to it anywhere, anytime you want, and you can choose content that suits you as an individual to be informed, to be entertained, to be enlightened. It's a flexible format. And it, its history goes back to audio books and um, programs that were done for motivational programs. But in 2005, the landscape changed when Apple added podcasts to iTunes. So before that, it was really a space where DIY enthusiasts hung out. And it was, uh, the format was on, if you're old enough to remember, tapes and CDs. But then along came things like portable hard drives and MP3, MP3 players. And then of course, Apple put podcasts on iTunes. Now when it did that in 2005, suddenly radio stations cottoned on to how effective the podcasting space was. And they started putting the content that they were offering across their radio stations in a podcast format alongside the DIYers. And that really started to transform what the podcasting landscape looked like. So these days when people talk about podcasting, they often refer to podcasting as a little bit like the democratization of audio or the democratization of radio. So what does that mean? It means you can get rid of the gatekeepers, so anyone can essentially make a program. But within reason, because you need to have quality. So a lot of people think that you can huddle under a blanket and block out the ambient sound in the room and create a podcast. But that doesn't give you the best listening experience or the best podcast. And this is why we're here tonight to see how we can create a really good, memorable podcast. Because there's a lot of podcasts out there, so many genres, so many good quality podcasts, and you want to be able to be distinctive and stand out and make your mark. Okay, a little bit of audience interaction. Who's listened to a podcast? Put your hand up. Oh, the majority of you, fantastic. Who's listened to the Masters Series podcast? Boo! I want you to get your phones out of your pocket right now. If you're on Apple, obviously go to the Apple app. If you're on an Android, go to Google search, type in Master Series, and then go and subscribe, because you'll get to hear all the juicy bits of Master Series every week. And I was going to say, well, that makes you a podcast listener now, but you, the majority of you already are. But it will make you a master series listener. So there you go. <laughs> now I want to talk about the podcasting landscape at the moment uh, in Australia and across the world, what it looks like. I mentioned in 2005 that when Apple added podcasts to iTunes that radio stations cottoned on. Now, radio stations have been heavily investing in podcasting ever since. In fact, a lot of radio stations have opened up their own podcasting divisions. The ABC has one, the BBC, Radio RNZ, WNYC in the US, and a whole bunch of others now have podcasting divisions. And even traditional newspapers have cottoned on too. The New York Times, the Australian Fairfax Media, they all produce their own podcasts. And they're commercial <coughs> outlets that are just dedicated to podcasts only. Two big ones come to mind in America, Wondery and Gimlet, and they are producing fantastic podcasts across the board. And of course, brands have now cottoned on to the power of podcasts. So, 
Brands such as GE, MasterCard and McDonald's, for instance, created and produced podcasts this year to add into their traditional marketing mix. Why? Because podcasts add to brand value. I want to share some key facts around podcasting. The ABC just released a report a couple of weeks ago that tells us what the podcasting landscape in Australia looks like at the moment. The good news is the majority of Australians actually have heard of the term podcasting, or at least they say they have. 91% actually say that they know what a podcast is. Around 62% have tried it out, they've listened, and about a third of Australians is what I would camp into the category of dedicated listeners. So people who listen to maybe one to four podcasts per month, so that's a third of Australians. There's been other reports as well. Earlier this year, w, uh, PWC, Australian Entertainment and Media Outlook, reported that they are expecting the monthly listening audience for podcasts to double and reach about 8.9 million by 2022. So that's only four years away. And then also this year, Google announced that it was going to invest in podcasting as well, that it was going to make podcasts easily searchable and they were looking at potentially dub doubling listenership within the next couple of years as well. So why do people listen to podcasts and how are they listening to podcasts? I mentioned the flexibility. So people are listening to podcasts because it's on their own terms. They get to choose. They don't have to make an appointment with the radio and they get to choose content that they are interested in, something that perhaps educates them, informs them, or they just want to have a bit of a laugh and be entertained. The majority of listeners are still listening to podcasts at home while they're doing things like chores, the gardening, or cleaning, or sewing and knitting, or some people are listening while they're watching uh, live sports on television. And the rest of the listeners are on the road. They're commuting in their car, on, in public transport, they might be walking their dog, or they're in a plane traveling. So they're the two major categories of listeners. And the, the big peak listening times tend to be what I call commute times, early in the morning, and late afternoon and early evening is when the majority of listening is happening. And the biggest growing audience of podcast listeners are women, middle-aged women around the 35 plus age group that's here in Australia and the US as well. And the good news for podcasts listening is that time spent listening is actually grown from what it was before. It's hovering around 48 minutes. So people are investing that much of their time to listen to a podcast. So why should marketers use audio as part of their marketing strategy and uh, podcasting as part of their marketing? Because modern digital marketing is all about relationships. It's about reaching customers and potential customers and giving them something of value rather than just trying to sell them a product or a service. A branded podcast is something that you can give to your customers to, to add value. And once again, as I mentioned, it can inform or entertain or enlighten them depending on what you're trying to achieve with your podcast. Now, a branded podcast embodies your organisations, your businesses, brand values, your key selling points, your tone of voice, but it doesn't have to be about your product or your services or your people or even your business. MasterCard did this this year where they made a podcast that was about finances and personal finances, but they didn't talk about MasterCard products and they didn't talk to MasterCard people. So it was purely an informative podcast. Let's talk about the unique benefits of podcasting over any other medium. Now, what podcasting does is it taps into our natural human tendency for communication. Two people talking to each other, is as old as time. We've done it since, you know, sitting around a campfire and, and talking to, to one another. Also, podcasting is a very intimate form of communication. Unlike what I'm doing here right now, where I'm talking to a group of you, where, you know, you talk to the we, podcasting is a conversation between the host 
and the person listening in their ear, it's a very one-on-one -on -one intimate conversation. You don't get that close to someone really. The other benefits of podcasting nowadays is we've got the technological capability to interview anyone from anywhere in the world and some of the technology is so great that it's almost studio quality so you could be talking to some great people in remote places around the world as long as you've got the technological capability which you can't do with some mediums and i mentioned how people are listening to podcasting unlike something like video podcasting allows you to multitask so you could be working out at the gym and listening to the podcast whereas video you need to sit down and actually watch it or a blog you need to sit down and actually read it so that's the strength of a podcast the other strength of a podcast is that you can actually have interviewees be anonymous particularly when it comes to topics that are really sensitive and you don't want to identify the people that you're interviewing so that's a real strength And I should mention for the budget conscious marketing department that it's actually a really cost effective solution compared to video as well. So what are the elements of a good podcast? Now a good podcast has to be a little bit like a book. Think about a really good book that you've read. It's got rich characters, it's got really great storytelling, it piques the imagination, it paints pictures for you. And the strength is that you get to paint those pictures and fill in those, those gaps. That's what a podcast does because you don't have images that go with it. And a branded podcast, if you're considering a branded podcast, has to have all of those elements as well. It needs to have compelling storytelling and a narrative arc. Three key factors you need to consider when making a good quality podcast is you need to really know your audience. Who are you talking to and what do you want them to get out of it? You need to be passionate about the subject matter that you're talking about or at least have done research on the subject so you are engaged in the actual topic that you're talking about and you need to bring in great storytelling elements. So knowing your audience will help you shape your whole podcast. That will dictate what themes you choose, what topics you choose so before you start your podcast, you need to ask yourself, what's in it for my listeners? And what's the problem that I'm trying to solve for them? And then you need to show genuine interest because genuine interest is infectious. Your listeners will actually pick up on that energy and will be enthusiastic along with you and listen all the way. You can't fake enthusiasm. If you're not invested in it, why would you expect your listener to be? And you can't just plug in a microphone and start recording. Like any good content, a podcast requires research, a plan, and a storyboard. And you need to hook your listeners from the get-go. The first 30 seconds are crucial. You need to hook them in. If you haven't got them in the first 30 seconds, chances are they'll switch off and they won't continue listening. The rule of thumb is, garbage in equals garbage out. So what you need to do is to create a good quality podcast that stands out from the pack. So how do we do that? Where do we begin to create a good quality podcast? First, you have to start with a purpose or a business objective. That requires you to have a clear that requires you to be clear on what problem you're trying to solve or what opportunity that you're trying to address. And be clear on what you hope to achieve with the podcast. And I mentioned it earlier, but you really need to be really clear on who your target audience is. If it helps, create an avatar of them so that you know what sort of person that you're speaking to. Then do your research. Think about what why would this audience listen in? And what's going to keep them coming back and listening over and over again to this podcast? And while you're researching, look at what else is out there. Is there a podcast that inspires you, that you would like to emulate? Maybe it's the tone that they're bringing in. Maybe it's the guest that they're bringing in. So jot all that down and see what you would like to emulate. Then you're ready to start planning. So come up with a concept and an idea 
which will create your roadmap for the podcast. And then consider the types of guests that you want to get. Now, this is really crucial. In the industry, we call good guests the best talent. Make a dream list of the talent that you would like to get, not just anyone run of the mill, because you want to get the best people in your podcast to have engagement. We had Nathan Chan here a few weeks ago talking to us. He's the founder of Founder Magazine. He was talking to us about how he got an interview with Richard Branson. Richard Branson didn't know who Nathan was. Nathan wasn't a known brand at the time, but he tried. He kept on knocking on the door. He was tenacious and he got that interview. If you don't ask, you don't get. Put together your dream list and work your way down from your dream list. Then consider your tone. Is your podcast going to be funny? Is it going to be instructive? Is it going to be investigative? This will all be determined by, once again, your audience and the types of guests you're going to have and what the purpose of the podcast is. Consider the format. Are you going to have studio interviews? Will you have field reports? Or will you have a bunch of journalistic reports stitched together? And then duration is really important. Is it going to be short, sharp and snappy and you're just going to roll out an episode for 15 minutes every week? Or do you want to really deep dive into a topic and sort of unpick some themes over an hour and release the podcast perhaps once a month? So these are all important considerations. And then think about the structure of it. Will it be narrative style? Would it be interview based? Will you have a co-host so you can bounce off each other so you don't feel like you're, you're left alone? And then once you've done all of this, it's time to put on your editorial hat. And that requires storyboarding. And that requires a script. And your scripts have to be tight. You need to have tight intros, tight narrative links, tight outros. You can't just be rambling. No one wants to sit there listening to your stream of consciousness for 40 minutes. It comes back down to the whole idea of great storytelling. And in the great storytelling, keep reminding your audience why they're there. Make it clear to them what this podcast is again and again. Choose your style and your sound. In a podcast, you have all sorts of elements that come together. You have ambient sounds, you have music, you have interviews from different sources. And you have to think about it as if you're putting together a beautiful composition, a beautiful musical piece that you want to, to sing. If something sounds jarring in that mix, rip it out. Just leave it out because it will stick out and make the rest of it not sound cohesive. And then have a call to action. Think about what you want your listeners to do at the end of listening to each episode. Then you're ready to record. Now, you may have read it on the internet that it's pretty easy to record a podcast, right? Don't trust the internet. You do need high quality equipment to record a podcast. You need a high quality microphone and you need editing capability. If you don't have any of these things, it's best to call in the experts or at least learn how to use these things. Think about it. If you've ever recorded a lecture or a presentation on your iPhone and then you've listened back to it the next day, it sounds pretty terrible, right? You're listening back to it, it sounds really scratchy, it's not the most pleasant listening experience. Why would you offer that to your audience as something to listen to week in and week out? You don't want to do that. And in terms of the way sound works, you're listening to my voice at the moment. Can you hear anything else? Someone pointed up at the aircon, yeah? Can you hear the traffic outside? No. Because our ears are not like microphones. Our ears are trained to, for selective hearing, whereas microphones aren't like that. Microphones are sensitive little things. They pick up everything. So this microphone on my chest, it's picking up that air conditioner. It's picking up traffic noise. And every week when we edit the Master Series podcast, we use editing techniques to actually edit out that low, front, low hum air conditioning frequency so that when people do download the Master Series podcast that they have a pleasant listening experience. So all these considerations are important. Editing is important for two reasons. One, for quality, 
So there are many, many examples of bad editing. Some of, some of the ones that come to mind are uneven levels or popping or outside noises bleeding into the interviewee's voice while they're talking and it just sounds horrible. No one wants to listen to that. So you need to consider all those factors when you're editing a podcast. But the other factor you need to consider is from an editorial perspective. Say you've, you've spent 40 minutes recording an interview and you've had a 40 minute chat with someone. Do you need to upload 40 minutes of that conversation for your audience to listen to? No. Chances are the person said five minutes of gold, five minutes of key takeaways. You need to be really harsh with your editing and offer your audience only the key takeaways they need to hear. They don't need to, need, they don't need to hear the rest of the 35 minutes because they've got a life and you just want to give them the key points and give them quality. So once you've done all of that, it's time to get your podcast out there. And this is easier said than done. So once you've done a good quality podcast, you upload it to a podcast platform such as Wooshka. But then after that, you can't just leave it there. You need to let people know that it's there. You need to use all of your marketing power. You need to put a budget behind it to communicate to your prospective audience that you've created this podcast specifically for them. And that means first and foremost, using all of your marketing power. Start with branding first. Give your podcast a clever title. Have nice, compelling artwork that's going to stand out in the podcast mix. And then use all of your channels, whether it's your social media channels, it might be Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, whatever social channels that you're actually already engaging with your customers or your potential audience with on. Use that to notify them that you've created this podcast. Make it easy for them to ac access the podcast. Put a badge on it so that they can immediately click on it and download and subscribe. Do the same thing if you've got a website, host it on your website. So use all of your marketing channels. If you've got an EDM, communicate through your EDM. And then if you have got the budget, and I would say put money behind it, because if you've spent money making it, you should spend money marketing it to get it out in front of everyone. It's like any other medium. If you don't market it, people aren't going to know that it ex exists. So why don't we do it under a blanket? If the barriers are so low and we get under a blanket and record under a meeting room, we don't want to do that, do we? Because as I mentioned, it sounds like it's technically easy but there are a lot of considerations in making a podcast that's of high quality. The thing that I can say that is the same or similar is other markets such as advertising or search engine optimization or um, website design. You can basically have a crack at all of these things. And in fact, we probably all have had a crack at all of these things. But once you call in the experts, you're going to get better results because you are competing with radio stations, you are competing with newspapers, you are competing with commercial brands that are pumping out podcasts. So to be able to play in their league, you need to think like they do. And in summing up, basically some key points, have a clear purpose, what's your business objective, make sure you plan, research, have a roadmap, record your podcast, have fun while you're recording your podcast, but also make sure your editorial hat's on all the time as you're editing. And then it's crucial that you consider distribution and marketing as part of the entire mix, not just making the podcast. Thanks, guys.